award of the evening. Please welcome a member of a Hollywood acting dynasty who has been nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award, the Spirit Award, and twice for the Academy Award. The star of Brandon Monroe's Blue Velvet, The Tale, Big Little Lies, and so much more. Emmy and Golden Globe winner, ladies and gentlemen, Laura Dern. for their artistry. I am particularly proud to also present the first award of the night. That's a good place. An award to a remarkable young man who I have grown to know and love both on and off screen. Shit. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> so please join me in watching this beautiful boy as we turn our attention to the screen. Nicholas. Small frame, 
but uh, more importantly, my glaring lack of athletic talent. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a public performing arts high school in Guardia in New York City simply because my uncle, my mom, my sister had gone there and I started to act and something changed and I felt myself falling in love for the first time in my life. I was getting inspired in a way I had when I wanted to become an athlete. But this time the inspiration wasn't to be superhuman, but very human indeed. The invincible Messi's and LeBron's weren't as interesting to me as the artists who were vulnerable for a living. The Heath Ledger's, the Joaquin Phoenix's, the more I saw people in my grade act and bury themselves, the more I was inspired, the more I turned to the world of film to watch anything I could get my hands on with young people performing, which is why I'm so damn honored that Laura Dern is presenting to me, because I've ever watched Blue Velvet, which you shot when you were 17 years old. I mean, it's so deeply moved by saying you're watching Wild Life Art, which will be a couple years later. It's why I'm honored to speak in front of Regina King, an actor's actress who buried herself in John Singleton's Boys in the Hood and Poetic Justice when she was only 20 years old. It's the inspiration I felt when I watched Barry Oldman light up the screen as Sid Vicious in his 20s, or as Joe Warren had pricked up her ears a year later. It's a feeling I got was at the Angelica Theater in 2016. I saw the screen credit directed by Barry Jenkins after seeing Moonlight, and it took me hours to remove the knot from my throat. And it's the feeling I got when I walked around Spike Lee's production office in New York in 2015 because I went to school with Spike's daughter, and I was helping her return some film equipment for a music video shoot. And when I got a second of one of those hallways, I took pictures of literally everything on the wall because the cinematic history was so damn inspiring. And I still have those pictures are on my iCloud. So, um, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to be somewhere. If you want me to delete them all, I'll delete them. But, um, <laughs> and lastly, it's my grateful to Nick Chef for letting me take on his journey, his lifetime with this role, the loving and caring family member he is, but also the very real and messy human who fell and relapsed 13 times over seven years before finally being sober now for eight years. If you haven't seen our film, Memoir, and I implore you to because it's a reminder of how messy we can be as people and how from that adversity we can triumph, we can be better from it. Real humans, real stories, a dedicated focus on bringing light to humanity authentically is fucking inspiring. And I look forward to a night acknowledging not our invincibility but rather the art and our flaws. Thank you for this honor.